An arithmetic logic unit or an ALU is one of the most fundamental part of a computer. And so, there are a lot of ways in which we could design one for real world applications. Today I'll talk about how we could build one in a breadboard using just pure logic gates through integrated circuits. Yeah, it's a lot of mess in the wiring, but it's still a working circuit anyways. Looking in the circuit, we can see that the ALU is just a bunch of other smaller circuits combined with each other. We can see that this one right here is a multiplexer circuit, this one is a full other circuit, and this one is just a couple of additional logic gates. We could also see that the most basic element of our circuit are just pure logic gates. You can see a couple of AND gates, inverters, OR gates, and exclusive OR gates. We decided to use 74HC series logic gates for this. Of course, you could also use the 74LS series and others. Here's a list of the ICs that we used. You might notice that we used an exclusive NOR gate even though the LU circuit requires none of this. The reason for this is that we came out short of exclusive OR gates. So instead, we use an exclusive NOR gate and then feed its output directly to an inverter. In that way, we could mimic the truth table of an exclusive OR gate. Before starting, uh, it is important to take note that the quality of the breadboards are a huge factor when building a prototype. We want good quality breadboards to make sure that the breadboard itself is not the actual problem if anything goes wrong. Also take note of the operating voltages of the ICs at the datasheet when choosing supply voltage. It's good to make sure that the supply lies pretty good in between this range. Of course you could also use double pole, double throw switches or maybe even dip switches for the inputs. In this circuit, we just use plain jumping wires as inputs such that placing the wire to the positive rail will turn it high and placing it to the negative rail will turn it low. When creating a circuit like this, it is a good practice to divide the circuit into multiple subparts. Like if we design the multiplexer circuit right here and put it into one breadboard, and get a separate breadboard for building the full adder circuit and another one for the remaining parts. The concept for this is that it would be easier for us to troubleshoot the problems that may arise when working with our ALU. It also ensures that, that one sub-circuit is working with no doubt in our mind before combining it onto the whole circuit. Now let's power this up and see if we will have a working ALU. specific ALU that we've just built follows the truth table. We know that our circuit has five different inputs and five and five different inputs means all in all you would have 32 possible combinations. Let's maybe try some input scenarios and see if our breadboard circuit follows what's written in the truth table. Let's go and try. The scenario when S1 and S0 are both turned high Mm, notice that the circuit would operate in full ladder operation in this situation with the sum output here and the carry output here. So now I could notice the sum and carry outputs are both turned low when. Yeah, it's both turned low now. It kind of makes sense because all of our three inputs are turned low. And mathematically, 0 plus 0 plus 0 is just 0. Now let's try 0 plus 0 plus 1. Yeah, it works pretty well as expected. Two zeros added to a 1 is just 0, 1 in binary. You could try to build a circuit at your home and do what I'm doing right now. So 0 plus 1 Yep, plus 1 is 1 and 0. And lastly, maybe we could try 1 plus 1 plus 1. Yep, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1 and 1 in binary. 
So here's the one, and here's the other one. This circuit right here is a good thing to try, and we encourage everyone to try this if they have spare time or um, maybe do this just to get ourselves preoccupied in these trying times. <laughs> we hope you gain something from these guys. Thank you.